I am going to fulfill another request today. Someone had been visiting my website and looking at my recipes for pesto, and then he wrote to me and asked, can you come up with a recipe for sun-dried tomato pesto? And I thought, that's a brilliant idea. Why didn't I think of that? That sounds delicious. I already have an idea how good it might taste because on my website already, I have a really simple recipe for spaghetti with sun-dried tomatoes. It takes longer to cook the spaghetti than it does to make the sauce. So that gave me an idea of how I might be able to do this. However, when I make this pesto, I'm thinking this might be good on cooked fish. And that's what I want to do today. I want to make this pesto and then I'm going to put it on a piece of fish that I want to experiment with. So let's make this sun-dried tomato pesto. I have here two ounces, which is about 57 grams of fresh basil that I bought this morning in the store. And I've got a Ziploc bag here that I'm going to put the leaves into. And to explain the reason why I'm doing that is to make good pesto, you need to crush the leaves. You don't just throw them in a food processor and chop them all up, that's just chopped basil. You have to crush the leaves to release those juices because the juices are where all of the flavor is. Okay, so there's my, my basil in there. And while I'm crushing this, I might as well crush my garlic. So I have four to five cloves here of fresh garlic. I also have four ounces of pecans that I roasted this morning, 10 minutes at 350 degrees. Just roast them up until they have a nice flavor. And that's all that's going to go into this bag. I'm going to squeeze the air out as best I can. I don't know how well this bag is going to work. This isn't as sturdy as a freezer bag. This is just a storage bag, but I'll give it a try. And then what I have here that I always use is my Wacker Spoon. Wackerspoon.com, I'll put the URL down there for you. Best thing I ever found for crushing basil. So I have to hammer this bag, hammer, 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 until everything is all crushed down. That's gonna take a few minutes. When crushing basil leaves, the traditional way was to make pesto in a mortar and then use a pestle to grind the leaves. I used to do it this way until my carpal tunnel syndrome started to flare up too much. Now I do it another way. Now that I have my leaves all crushed down, I can put all of this in a food processor. I always have to scrape the inside out and I do that by just tr cutting the edges off like so. And then I can open this out and use a spatula to just get all this extra good stuff ready to go into the food processor. Oh, that smells so good. That fresh basil all crushed now, ready to use. Really nice fragrance. Okay, that's in the food processor. Now what I have here is six ounces of sun-dried tomatoes. These were packed in oil. <clears throat> I drained those as best I could. And then I'm gonna start off with one cup. I'm sorry, one half cup, which is about 118 milliliters, 120 milliliters of extra virgin olive oil. And by the way, those six ounces of tomatoes in metric, that's about 170 grams. I can add more olive oil. Depends on how you're gonna use your pesto. For example, if you're gonna put it in pasta and you want the pesto to drizzle down through the cooked pasta, use more oil. I'm gonna be putting this on fish, so I don't want it too oily, but I will likely add more oil. And then I have here one cup, which is about 100 grams of grated Parmesan cheese, finely shredded. And then optional, this is the leaves. These are the leaves from maybe a dozen, 10 to 12 sprigs of flat leaf parsley. And then because it makes it a little bit easier to do cleanup, I'm gonna put a little piece of plastic over the top here because 
there's all kinds of little fiddly bits where things can get into my lid. The plastic keeps the lid clean. One less thing to clean up. All right, now I just want to pulse this until I reduce this down to a nice paste. I know this is going to need some seasoning, so I have here some salt. I'm going to put a pinch of salt in there and then grind some fresh ground black pepper in there. That'll be good to start. Then mix that in and then I'll taste this to see what I've got. Motorcycle going by. This really is a trailer park, folks. Not a TV studio. There we go. All right. Out comes my red handle tasting spoon. Let's see what this tastes like. Needs a little more salt. But other than that, ooh, ooh, that tastes good. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so good on fish. I can just tell already. That's going to be brilliant on fish. Wow, that's got a nice flavor to it. Chuck, thank you for the idea. That was brilliant. Now I can start adjusting the texture of this. You can see how dry that is. So I have some extra virgin olive oil here. I'm going to dump quite a bit in. I don't want this really runny, but I want this to be a nice, oily, moist pesto that I can put on a piece of fish. More. So you can adjust this any which way you like. And that'll probably do it right there. Yeah, that's nice. It's got a nice oily texture, but it's not runny, so it's not collapsing down. I would want it more runny if I were putting it on pasta. I would think of a pasta sauce, how it runs through the pasta. You want that texture, but for what I'm going to use this for on fish, I want it oily without being runny. That's my pesto. This is the fish that I'm planning to use. This is, I bought this at Costco. This is steelhead trout. It usually has the skin on, yes, it does, which is okay. I'm not going to cook this whole piece, obviously. I'm just going to cook a good part of it. And then I'm also going to have some broccoli with this. Okay, I'm ready to plate my fish here. I cooked this three minutes per side. And after I cooked the first side, skin side down, I removed the skin. So now this is a piece of skinless trout. And then what I want is I'm going to put some broccoli on the side because I love broccoli. I cooked this in the microwave. How does that look? One more right there. Maybe one more. That's it. Just that one there. And then here is my pesto. And I'm just going to put, I'm not going to smother the top because I don't want to bury the fish in pesto. So I'm going to put a good sized spoon just on one end like that. So that when I eat it, I can take some of the pesto, put it on my fish. But there it is, fish with my sun-dried tomato pesto. Doesn't that look fantastic? So there it is. I do want to tell you that the only thing I did to this fish was I seasoned it with salt and pepper before I put it in the skillet. I cooked it for three minutes skin side down, flipped it over, removed that skin, cooked it for another three minutes, finally turned it over again, and then plated it. So I cut a little piece of my fish here. I'm going to take a little bit of my pesto. Nice piece of my fish. I really like this fish.
Boy, that's perfect. The pesto has a little bit of a tomato flavor to it, but you can also taste the basil. <laughs> it's like a perfect blend of flavors. Nothing overpowers anything else. And this fish, I love this fish. So it's my favorite kind of farmed fish. Mm -hmm -hmm. Okay. Excuse me. I'm going to go enjoy my fish dinner. It's just in time for dinner with my sun-dried tomato pesto. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website mobilehomegourmet.com and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.